All right, welcome back to uh, the post coffee session where, um, you know, I will be going over the unit CHC DIV003 Manage and Promote Diversity, Task 3. Again, it says observation single. So there is one video as well. Is a meeting and a report. A student is declaring, I have been provided with instruction about the task to be undertaken. Okay. Student signature will come here, your name, your number, and the date that, uh, you know, uh, date of observation, which I can put it as well whenever you I will observe. Okay. And that's my name will come here. I will sign it. Don't worry about that. This is the main part. There are two parts in the assessment task. There are two parts in the assessment task. Part A, simulated stakeholder meeting, and part B is a return report. Part A, right? Again, I have made this smaller because it's not important. It's for the classroom student. External or online student, I will provide you information about what is to be done here. Okay. And part B is a return report. Student individually to complete, follow detailed instruction in the task. Again, pretty standard. You have two attempts, but I can take care of the third as well if that's required. But please ensure that within two of them, um, you know, you um, get the required stuff done. Okay. Um, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Is a group activity. All right. The students will participate in a simulated stakeholder meeting. Simulated is like not real. Your organization has surveyed 50 clients. Right. On their experience with your organization. So you choose the organization in relation to diversity and inclusiveness. Clients were asked to complete a feedback form and a summary of the data is gathered. So you have provided your client with some feedback form and they give you some feedback on uh, the diversity and inclusion. Okay. The, all the data is located in Appendix 1. So I quickly can summarize what is Appendix 1. Summary of client feedback. 50 clients form were collected. Quantitative data. 15 of 50 reported intake form didn't allow for any sex or gender to be recorded beyond male and female option, which is bad. You might have observed that some form ask you what is your gender and there's only male or female. That's an outdated form. It has to be revised. What if you are neither of male or female? LGBTI. What would you do? Right? 35 out of 50 reported they could not remember whether the intake form allowed for sex and gender to be recorded beyond male and female. So 15 said it didn't allow. 35 said I can't recall if it was allowed. Okay. The reception environment. 30 out of 50 reported the reception was welcoming, comfortable, and easy to bring children to. 10 said they were unsure if reception was welcoming, comfortable. And 10, another 10 said did not feel the reception was welcoming, comfortable, easy to bring children to. So that's about reception. Then some data about organization, literature, material. Right? I'm not reading them word by word. It's very easy to read and understand. Yeah. This is all quantitative data, the one with the numbers. About qualitative data, in general, comment section, Klein noted the following issue. Did not feel safe to be open about the sexuality. You know? Um, for example, what this is saying is, if you feel the person you are talking to is not um, in a mindset to understand that there is a choice or a freedom to express gender other than male or female, right? If the person feels like, oh, he will treat me like that, if they will find out I'm gay or I'm lesbian, right? Then this is what they feel. This is a feedback. They didn't feel comfortable that I could talk about my sexual orientation or I could talk about a gender more than male or female. Yeah, because we are always in a limited mindset. Oh, the gender is male or female. If someone said that they are gay, we'll have to get oh, That's what they are saying, right? There were no space to record same-sex parent on the child's information. 
okay so for example mr and miss what beyond that you know um what's your father's name what's your mother's name you know like it should have some option if it is a, a male male kids or a female female kids right like it happened in anna's case yeah um, in our 81 82 we're unable to fit a wheelchair into a located interview room and adequate alternative space could not be located you know it doesn't have room for physically challenged people like i told you you know um, if you wanted to allow space for physically challenged people, you should allow ramp access, right? What we mean by ramp access, I'm sure you would have seen that. Um, ramp access. Um, yeah, something like this. Oops, I don't mean to buy anything. Yeah, something like this. It's like really, you know, they can easily go on to it, you know, rather than this. You got a ramp access like that. So it's as a steps for anyone who want to use as a ramp access, you know, easy to set up thing. Okay. Um, like there are many ways you can do it, right? Ramp access could be like this, could be like this, could be, you know, rather than steps, you got a bigger one here. Like there are many, many ways because stairs is not good if you are in a wheelchair. Right, you can't accept that for sure. Okay. Right. Um, we're unable to understand the workers' explanation as they use many slang words, you know. Slang is like not English, you know, local words. Um, children prime didn't fit through entry door. They were not offered interpreter service by the workers. So these are some of the qualitative data, the feedback. Again, no need to memorize, they just keep somewhere in your brain that this is something related to those. Okay. Right. So that's your appendix one. Right, I'll append this on at the end of this. This information will be used during your meeting. So again, you are participating in a stakeholder meeting. We know who are stakeholder. We discussed that very well uh, yesterday. Your organization, Survey Safety Clown, and the data is available in Appendix 1. Okay? You are required to role play one of the following stakeholder during the meeting. Stakeholder role, union representative of staff, organization director, Staff team leader, representative of key stakeholder group, or representative of the other people with disability group. Okay. Right. Now I got 15 in my classroom right now because I think Frederick was the one who had to leave. Um, so it's up to you if you wanted to create a group of five, group of four, group of three, right? It was just with my previous batch that a group one that are like, okay, so if I had to um, say it like this, for example, group one could be Casper. Yeah, Edward. Face, that's it. Or let me add more F, E, Ferris, and you. Okay, that's my group one. Only one video amongst all of you. So everyone will contribute something. Casper is a union representative. Edward is organization director. Faze is staff team lender. Ferris is um, LGBTQI. And Hugh is uh, people with disability group. Same thing for the other, other five of you. Um, whom did we cover? Hugh. So, Jacqueline, Jacqueline um, Joseph, um, JD, and I'm curious, Michael, and Modesta. Again, the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Another one video. And finally, we got uh, N A O Naomi, Norman, Peter, Soraya, and who is in the bottom? Wilson. Wilson. One video for all of you. How many you pick up in a group? It's absolutely fine. It doesn't specify that. You are required to role play one of the following stakeholders during the meeting. That's it. Okay. How do you prepare for um, the role play? So what you would do prior to the meeting, research the following. The perspective 
and responsibility that each stakeholder listed below, uh, listed above, brings to the meeting. So what does a union representative does when there is a meeting? What does a director do? You know, um, staff team leader, um, LGBTQIs, you know, the person represented can say, hey, you need to revise your form because your form does not allow for any gender other than male and female, right? I'm happy to show you some forms like that. Uh, forms including gender and age. Um. Okay, I'm giving some example here. And this is not good, building your form, male and female only. Again, you're going back to the poor feedback. It should be something, she or her, he or him, they or them, you know, let me type, something like that, male, female, I prefer not to say, right? Or you can like male, female, non-binary, transgender, intersex, I prefer not to say, yeah? And finally, male, female, non-binary, transgender, intersex, let me that written not to say. I guess something like that. Okay, so if you are a member of a representative of key stakeholder group LGBTQI, you should be arguing something that, guys, we need to revise our form to include more diversity, inclusiveness, right? Don't be ever ashamed of raising this point. Yeah, ever. Okay, um, that's the same form, designing forms. No, that's not good. Um, that's the same thing. Yes, this one woman, men, non men, and trans and intersex, two spirit, gender, non conforming, or other. Right? So your forms need to be revised. Okay, the representative of key stakeholder group, people with disability, will cover the other aspect. Which aspect? The ramp access, right? They will say, guys, we are not getting there. We are not a full diverse organization. Reason, based on a feedback from my client, client did not, um, you know, um, that be that. yes, client were not able to fit a wheelchair. So if your space is too narrow, it's not just a ramp access, it's a space that you allow them. Number one is the ramp access. Number two is the disabled toilet, right? There has to be a toilet for a disabled person, right? The male restroom, the female restrooms are fine. You should have at least one toilet or restroom which allows this facility for a physically disabled person. If they need to use it, where will they go? They can't stand up and use the male restroom, you know. They can't get up and use the other one. How would they solve this basic need, right? So that's what the person from this representation uh, group will say. Staff team member will represent staff. Um, this is very clear, but this two are a bit new, okay? So, for example, if Hugh is representing... Um, did I say it right? Hugh? Is it correct? Or he? How, how do I say it? Hugh? How, how do I say your name? I say your name. Okay, that's good. I don't want to misspell um, anyone's name. That's the worst thing. Yeah, misspelling or saying it wrong. It will hurt people. Then oh, they can't say my name. Okay, that's good. I thought so, but then I all of a sudden become conscious. Yes. So, Hugh, if you're representing people with disability, you must raise the point you discussed or uh, received from the survey. Yeah, this one. Um, the ramp access and everything. 
Um, if, uh, who was the other guy? Um, Ferris, if you are representative of a key stakeholder group LGBTQI, then you must raise this point. Um, you know, uh, very uncomfortable, uh, this one. No, um, this one. No space to record same sex parent. Yeah. So you need to pick up the key point from appendix and discuss that thing. Okay. Now, what you will do, I'll explain again. Uh, workers practice, you know, um, this is the point. Research the following. So that's something that you should do. Okay. Meeting purpose. Review and evaluate client feedback data about your organization's diverse populist practice. Ensure practices are promoting inclusiveness. So that's the purpose agenda. Review and evaluate summary. Agenda number one. Identify NLS gap in a service delay. I guess so you already identify some gap. Uh, not everyone feels that you are a diverse organization so far. Uh, develop recommendation. Develop measures to evaluate outcome. Okay. That's everything. So your meeting agenda, it doesn't specify how long the meeting should be. So literally, it could be like, you know, if you're five people, 10 minutes, everyone will speak for one, two, one, two minutes. Yeah, easy enough, right? And then you submit one video. When you submit it to me, just mention it that this video belongs to Casper, Edward, Faze, Ferris, Hugh. That's it, right? And that's why people, I prefer five people because everyone is talking for a few minutes and you are done with the task. So that's your first part, the video. Again, you must research this. That's a meeting purpose, talking about diverse popular practice and you know how you promote diversity. Then this is the meeting agenda. Okay. And then for part B, it's a return report, individual activity. So it's not amongst the group. Individually, students will complete the return report with this heading, report title right introduction this informs the reader what this report is about okay then um that's introduction so if someone wants to read your report prior to reading the report they will read the introduction like the same thing goes with a book isn't it there's a preface that is like a back cover right which leaves the you know um what is it Yeah, the back cover will tell a wildflower. Let's look at what is this? The 14 stars, right? So there's a back cover. You read the back cover and you say, oh, okay, um, this is something that I wanted to read. Oh, it's a boring book. It, it doesn't, um, I'm not interested in this book yet. So introduction does the same thing. So you need to provide an introduction what this report is about. Based on the introduction, any person will decide that, oh, okay, the report is relevant to me, or there's an, oh, okay, boring, and nothing interesting, or not my type, yeah? Use three sections below as your heading. Each section must contain all the information outlined. You may use any subheading additionally, if you wish, yeah? You may use... I would just add additional you know, subheading if you wish. And then section one, client feedback evaluation. So based on a client feedback, you are creating some points. Second is recommendation from your point. Third is measures to evaluate outcome for improvement. What is a feedback? Why this is being reviewed? So you will say, okay, we conducted a survey of 50 clients and this is what our client says. We thought it's the right time to review. Okay, What is qualitative? And what qualitative quantity data being used? Again, go back to appendix one and talk about it. Include a summary of the data and easy to understand form, like a simple graph or a percentage, right? Um, you can make it extremely fancy here. If you want, you can import an Excel tab or you can insert a table here, right? You can insert some shapes or, you know, you can really make it link some, um, some file with it, some cross-reference with it, right? Or simply in copy and paste from Excel or any chart up here. It's entirely up to you what you want to do, 
right? But if I tell you that, uh, you know, um, 21 out of 30 people say, it, then it doesn't really help. But if I tell you that 70% of the people believe, then it's very clear. And that's why I said either a percentage or a table information or a graph information, right? Like a pie chart, if you wanted to create, right? Um, let me say simple graphs example, right? Um, no, no, not like that. Um, uh, graphs in Excel. This is a graph that I used to create. This was my PhD topic, yeah, graphs. Okay, here you can see some bar chart, some column chart, some stack chart, some pie chart, some column chart, yeah. Many, many charts that you can use. Pie chart is very good when you got limited data because here in appendix one, you are talking about two categories. Here you are talking about three categories. Here again, three categories, some more categories, yeah. So it's good if you can bring pie chart, yeah. Um, now, how do we do that? Okay, I'll just show you. I mean, you don't have to follow exactly what I say. It's actually you how you do it, okay? So let me just bring this 30, 10, 10. That's it. You can just copy and paste that. If you want, you can write, um, you know, you can write all that thing. What was the 30? The reception was welcoming. That's it. The blue means reception was welcoming. That's what that felt. Oh, reception was good. No? Um, the orange means they were unsure if reception was welcoming. And that um, this gray means that he didn't feel the reception was welcoming. That's it. That's a chart. Just write your chart title and copy and paste this chart in your Word file. So you can, um, you know, uh, if you are doing it here, where does the graph thing go? Yeah, that was the one. Right, so I'll just quote here and then paste. And then you can drag and make it, um, you know, fit enough. Or you can use it like many, many ways to align it. Yeah, it's up to you how you want it, how attractive you want it to do. Even a simple thing will do the job. You can really make it like this and, you know, and then uh, edit the chart in the Excel. What I did was extremely simple. Just write this three and four, write the numbers, and your chart is ready. That's it. It can't be any simple than this. Same thing could be done for the other. If you want, I'm happy to repeat it. Yeah, let's go here. Um, what was our data? Let's talk about 25, 20, and 5. 25, 20, and 5. Excel is smart enough. It will understand what are you trying to say. Yeah. That's it. Again, select this six rows. Go we'll insert. This circle is in pie chart. You can go for 2D. You can go for 3D. You can go for donut. You can go like this. You can go like that. But as I say, just make it simple. I don't mind 2D or 3D. I sometimes like 3D. Looks good. That's it. Change the chart type. What this was about. This was about literature and material. 
control C, go here, right? And control V. That's it. Once that's ready, if you're happy with that, select the chart like this. Control C again, paste it here. Okay, paste it here. That's it. That's good. Yeah. So you can make it as fancy as you want, or in a percentage, or in a table form. Okay. Now let me undo those because I don't want to leave the chart here. And again, if you don't know how to do it, there are only a couple of sources which you can go for help. One is God, other is Google. YouTube is a part of Google. Um, why not? Yeah. Simple Excel charts. That's it, Excel charting. We don't need the software. Like this is simple way, this is simple way. The more number of you in a smaller video, just pick one of them and you know, this is five minutes, this is two minutes, nine minutes, it's 40 minutes long, don't go for it. You know, um, I would go for two or just something like that because your data is extremely simple, extremely simple like this, right? It's a three minute video, that's it. Yeah, happy to share that link. Otherwise, just go on YouTube and ask. Right, so that's about graph. Um, gaps identified during your evaluation. That should be a part of the report. Second, any recommendation, workplace practice, which will be implemented in your organization in order to uh, close the identified gaps in the service delivery. And finally, list and detail measures your organization. What will you do to improve the outcome? You already know the outcome from the survey, but what will you do? Like I said, you know, all the discussion that you did here, right? Um, for a member of, uh, you know, key stakeholder with disability for LGBTQI, you know, all that thing that you discuss here, you can list it here. What you will do to improve, there is no ramp access. This is what people have said in Appendix 1, right? didn't feel safe enough, there was not enough space. And you can talk about based on the feedback that we received, we need to really allow um, disabled people or physically challenged people to use the ramp, to allow the wheelchair, right? Uh, make sure so your roads are smooth. Uh, otherwise, there are, you know, the person in the wheelchair could have a very worst bumpy ride and that's not good. Yeah, they're, they're already in the bed shape. You don't want to make it worse. Right, so that's a simple report with three sections. Must include responses to this point, as it says here. Um, yeah, use three sections below, and you can use additional subheading if you want. Cool. Any questions on this? Anyone? Okay. I'm stopping the recording.